into the life of Stevie Ryan. She's a YouTuber from the earlier years of YouTube. Her story, unfortunately, ends in a very mishandled mental health breakdown. So let's get into the story. If you're triggered by the act of someone taking their own life, I completely understand and please feel free to check out because today we'll be talking about Stevie Ryan, one of the very first YouTubers to really become an influencer and her mental health issues and her rise on YouTube. Stevie Kathleen Ryan, a self-described camera hog, was born June 2nd, 1984 in a town called Victorville, California. Her parents worked at a family business calibrating trucks alongside interstate way stations. This business went back two generations on her mom's side and it must have been a great family business as it was able to support a pretty nice upper middle class existence in California. Growing up, Stevie Ryan idolized old Hollywood icons such as Lucille Ball, Sarah Barton, and Audrey Hepburn. You can clearly see these influences in Stevie's appearance. She also went to her high school prom dressed as Marilyn Monroe. After a brief stint in community college, Stevie decided to follow her brother to Huntington Beach, California. Growing up, Stevie Ryan never participated or starred in any high school productions. By her teenage years, Ryan began sneaking out of the house to hang out and one night she ended up on a set of a Moby video. A video which she randomly was asked to be featured in. This would change Stevie's perception of everything. Once she got a taste of the limelight, she loved it. In around 2006, Ryan began booking commercial jobs and she had been uploading her content to a new platform called YouTube. Um, how did I get started? You know what, I found well, it was weird. It was like the timing was perfect because I was making videos on my own, like at home, because I discovered a little editing system on my computer. Wow. And so I became, I'm, I get very obsessed with things in OCD. So I became obsessed with editing and just creating content so that I could edit it together. And I was basically like my own actress, my own everything, and, and editing these things together. And I just so happy. Platform as we know it today was completely different. In fact, the majority of the content on YouTube was DIY and diary style videos. Now, I think it's credit and finance, or now I think it's credit and finance, or kids content or something, I'm not sure. Stevie's creativity absolutely shined on YouTube. Stevie became one of the first YouTubers to produce consistent videos which got millions of views on the platform. This attracted the attention of a large television network, but more on that later. Today on Marley. I have a baby no matter what. I threw my grandma out the window because she's ugly. I'm proud to say I've already had gonorrhea and syphilis five times. I've been smoking cigars since I was three years old. One time, I stole semen from a sperm bank so I could get pregnant with it. I Stevie TV came out in 2012 on VH1. The episodes would feature Stevie impersonating various pop culture icons, such as Lady Gaga, Amy Winehouse, and Justin Bieber. Whoa! What the hell? Hey, hottie, what year is it? It's 1993. 1993? That's like old West times. It would appear that Stevie's hard work had finally paid off. She had garnered her own buzz online and the major networks came knocking. She was living the influencer dream. So by this time, she had already established her own series on YouTube called Little Loca, A Scandalous Hood Rat. So come here, please, and look at this. I cannot believe this. Who in the hell leaves the empty toilet paper roll on the thing and then puts the fresh toilet paper roll on top of that? Seriously, you guys, how long does it take you to take this off? Throw it away, take this and put it on. It takes you longer to scratch your butt, I bet. So by this time, she had already established her own YouTube series. Stevie's series was called Little Loca. <laughs> I can't say this. Oh God. Stevie's YouTube series was called Little Loca the Scandalous Hood Rat. 
a show that bought her a lot of attention and controversy. I bet, like I said, the platform, oh. and bear in mind that the YouTube platform was completely different back then. I don't think you can title a video that way and not get called out for it. Ryan herself being a white Caucasian woman and making her aesthetic look like a quote unquote cholo. Yeah, that might ruffle a few feathers these days. Well, I don't know, what about you guys? Do you think this content would get backlash on YouTube these days? Let me know down below in the comment section. At this point, Stevie had mastered the art of impersonating the rich socialites and celebrities of 2010s to the point that the Futon Critic referred to Ryan as a pop culture chameleon, which I thought was pretty cool. Around this time, Stevie developed a new viral sensation, Stevie, a girl whose addiction to twerking was so bad, her family had to stage an intervention. My family was everything. She was always there for me. Was the best big sister little broken asshole. That old Stevie is gone. Just makes me sick to my stomach to see what my sister's become. I'm addicted to twerking. Don't look at me! We don't know what to do. I thought that a hip-hop dance class would be a healthy outlet for her. I blame myself. I'm the one who signed her up. The show ran for two seasons on the network. And this show, along with the, along with their other show, Single Ladies, had unfortunately gotten canceled. After her show was abruptly canceled by VH1, its last episode aired July 12th, 2013. According to Ryan's dad, this devastated his daughter, who found it difficult to navigate her career after that, saying, her father says the loss weighed on Stevie and pursuing a more straightforward career as an actress didn't jib with her sensibilities. She wasn't really interested in becoming a character that somebody else made up, he said. Although there's certain points in time where her talent manager who respected and admired her would describe Stevie as being fearless but petrified at the same time how many people can relate to that right and he worried about her as she tried to navigate her career post cancellation of her show Evie loved to create her own characters and write her own scripts she found the audition process difficult and not really an art not really an art she would ever come to enjoy Evie struggled with this dichotomy for years and this made her very self-conscious she may have even felt more like an imposter than an actual actor among the other actors and actresses during an audition process. So issues of being good enough may have popped up for her as well. Who knows? Especially after the cancellation of a TV show that she worked so hard to create. But one audition she did land was a podcast. Stevie started a co-hosting podcast with reality TV star Brody Jenner called Sex with Brody. Sex, it's a sex talk podcast which Brody and co-host Ryan along with Dr. Mike Dow discuss sex, relationships, and the group sat down with celebrity guests and viewers were also able to call in with questions regarding sex and intimacy. This point in time was not only a different side of Ryan but also a different side of Brody Jenner. Brody, who is seemingly a longtime Hollywood hypersex surfer bro, by now Stevie Ryan was an openly bisexual woman on an all male panel giving a woman's point of view. This at the time was unprecedented. And if made today, would probably fit right into our current YouTube landscape.
TV who at the time of taping was in a relationship with a man would occasionally share stories of her run-ins with the same sex during a time when comedians such as Amy Schumer starting to take the taboo out of female sexuality. In fact, it was that unique quality about Stevie that landed her the role on the podcast with Brody. For the most part, she seems to have enjoyed being on the show with the, with the other two hosts. Although I can only find four episodes that I'd have to pay for, which I'm not going to do. Today was day two, and I, feel I do a wonder different. why the episodes are no longer available, or years, if and today I feel hella only feisty, four episodes like my old self. were recorded. In fact, I might fuck a bitch up for fun. But anyways. Like, I'm not playing with So you Ryan, guys. who was like, open about her mental really health struggles, like, frequently tweeted about years, her feelings on her progress slide, with anxiety like, and depression, and she began and today, seeking treatment. It's like, no one's getting away with anything at all. Like, I dare someone to come for me. Come for me on Twitter or come for me in real life, bitch. And I'll, I'll rip your wig off so quick. I'll show everyone your bald ass head. This TMS shit got me fucked up. Because I just got flooded with, like, some emotions about how much I love all of my friends and my family. And I'm so lucky to have so people that care about me and what I do know is eventually Stevie stepped out on her own and started a podcast herself that focused on mental health alongside her fellow female comedian, Kristen Carney. The two were on a mission to quote, unquote, give sad people a reason to live. And their podcast name was Mentally Chill. Or ill, however you look at it. I thought that was pretty cute. But sadly, this podcast would, of course, be short-lived, at least with the two of them. And now, about a year later, Stevie began going to see a psychiatrist, nurse practitioner, named Nurse Bolts. At the time, he was six years into his role, so I'm not clear how he thought it would be appropriate to begin dating a patient and break all kinds of nursing and doctor-patient laws but he did. The two began dating about two years into their patient-nurse relationship. He allegedly began flirting with her first, and according to a formal filing, and according to a formal filing from June 2020, the two ultimately began sleeping together while they were still in a patient-doctor relationship. Unfortunately, in the relationship, she wasn't getting any better even though she was pretty much dating her doctor. We do live in a society where people will seek out the vulnerable. And I feel like she was vulnerable and in the wrong place at the wrong time. This makes me think he took an opportunity he shouldn't have taken. The power dynamics in their relationship was all wrong. Mishandling of Ryan's mental health by Bolts was the deciding factor in the future of the star. The State Board of Nursing launched, a, launched an investigation into Baltz after her passing and concluded she was likely diagnosed without any clear documentation to back it up. He also failed to give any logical reasoning as to why she had, per, she had been prescribed all the different medications. As a nurse practitioner, Baltz was required by law to have a supervising physician give the final say on patient treatment. But this for some reason was not ever done. 2017, Ryan appears to have been having a bit of a rough go at it. She was still struggling very much with her anxiety and depression because like I said, just because she was dating the nurse doesn't mean she was getting any type of help, unfortunately. She was still struggling very much with the anxiety and depression, and now she had also become suicidal. However, this fell on deaf ears, and nothing became of it. In the week leading up to her final days, she took to social media to grieve the loss of her beloved grandfather, who she lovingly referred to as Papa, and even worried about speaking, even expressed how she feared speaking about the subject on her podcast would trigger her. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. She shouldn't have shared so much of herself in that moment. 
but by July, Stevie Ryan had ended her life at age 33. Seemingly without warning, she was found in her home with fans taken to social media to show their adoration for the late actress. So Stevie Ryan's story is a powerful message of mental health can affect anyone at any time. No matter how successful or seemingly, or even how funny and forthcoming they are with their own mental health issues. Or others would find weakness in kind of ignoring or dismissing and not letting anyone know about their mental health issues. Stevie Ryan was actually one of the very first influencers on YouTube platform to do this. If you or anyone you know is in trouble, struggling with anxiety and depression, please, please reach out for help. You're not weak, you're not crazy, you're not the first one. There's tons of resources and people who care. You aren't alone. So in honor of Stevie's life and her story, and let's support each other on our journeys. Until next time, subscribe, leave a comment, share if you care. Bye.